At five pounds and 12 ounces, Louise Joy Brown proved for the very first time in vitro fertilization actually worked. 42 years on and some 8 million babies have been born the same way after an egg has been fertilized in a lab. But IVF costs thousands. It remains an expensive gamble and emotionally stressful. Just one in three women get pregnant after their first cycle. So we met two women who've turned to tech to help. Going through infertility is one of the most difficult things ever that I've ever had to experience. You're constantly in and out of hospital. You're having to make up kind of excuses as to why you're not in work. It literally feels like you're just throwing money down the drain. To go through the IVF and then to get a negative test result is just heartbreaking. I think I sat in bed for about three or four days just pretty much non-stop crying. <laughs> With such a heavy price placed on failure, anything that improves the chances of success could have a huge impact for would-be parents. Here in Israel, one team believes that AI can change those odds. Traditionally, a human embryologist grades how viable eggs are, but this is a time-consuming, manual and subjective process. There are many decisions that are based on, you know, gut feeling and personal experience. And even if you go to the same IVF centers, two experts will give, can give you different opinions on the same embryo. Instead of relying on human expertise, this system uses geometric deep learning, a branch of AI that goes beyond just visual images, the written word or voice recognition. It's been trained on data from tens of thousands of videos and images, as well as patient data and environmental data from the lab. In geometric deep learning, you're not, you're not limited to the type of the information that you're trying to analyze. For example, you can analyze graphs and 3, 3D figures and many other types of information. A clinical paper presented by the team this year suggests its methods are almost 20% better than human experts at selecting a viable embryo. The AI is also potentially 30% better at identifying an embryo that wouldn't result in a successful pregnancy. Patients like Anna are already benefiting from this type of AI egg selection. Of course, I'm very happy I'm pregnant now. When I told my husband the news, he cried. This is all promising, but embryonics will need to continue piloting in the wider scientific community. If we can use this technology and really create good prediction models through artificial intelligence and it's proven that it works, it can help embryologists pick the right embryo so the patient achieves a pregnancy a lot quicker. It can help inform a patient to whether they can keep having treatments. If their chances are very low and a prediction model will say that, it may influence their decision to move on to other types of treatment or move away from treatment. So it really will give good choices for both the clinical staff and patients. But what we do have to do is just be a little bit cautious. It's early days, it is emerging technology, and patients just need to work out whether if this is something they're going to be charged for, that this is going to make a difference for them now. While AI egg selection is still being piloted, many other technologies are also helping people to become parents. Third time lucky and Ligia did finally get pregnant with support from the world's first online IVF clinic. This uses an app to offer 24-7 support to those trying for a baby and can cut hospital visits down to just two. The clinic has also now launched an AI tool that it says will help more couples to conceive. This uses half a million data points from the government's fertility clinic regulator and looks at a patient's age, weight and lifestyle. After giving these few elements, we'll actually give you a score telling you what are your chances to conceive and you will be able to play on the parameters to actually see, okay, if I quit smoking, how does that affect my fertility? If I drink a bit less, what is the effect? Or if I lose weight, what is the effect? The tool estimates a woman's chances for natural conception or IVF with an egg or sperm donor whilst keeping personal data safe. The idea is to leave the data 
in the clinic to have it anonymized and that's the algorithm that actually travels. If you use something like Waze, you know that actually it's not all of the data from all of the people using Waze that is collected and centralized. Actually, the algorithm learning on everyone's phones and becoming more clever for the others to benefit. And for patients like Anna and Ligia, their high-tech IVF journey isn't over yet. If I want to try for another baby after this, I will ask the doctor to use artificial intelligence. We have considered having a second child because we'd like to have siblings. I mean, it's automatically a friend, isn't it, for, for your child?